the establishment are targeting women more than men. Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. Here's a statistic. A third of all women's criminal convictions in the UK are for evading the TV license fee, according to new government figures. The data released by the Ministry of Justice has led to claims that the BBC could be responsible for indirect gender discrimination, it says here, as the offence accounts for 30% of all women's convictions and only 4% of men's. Women are 10 times more likely to be convicted of evading TV licence payment, the Telegraph reported. Victims Commissioner Dame Vera Baird told the newspaper it is of a serious concern that so many women are prosecuted for TV licence evasion. Why is this? Is this real? Is this some kind of psychological propaganda these media people are using here? It's ridiculous. People shouldn't be forced to pay for such a crappy service that exists merely to funnel government and social engineering propaganda into your head. You see, the whole of the media is like a camera lens, and so whoever whoever owns the company will derive, they will dominate and twist the narrative. So whatever they want you to think, you're going to end up thinking. There's no consideration given to the fact that something that could have happened to Diana might have also happened to Megan. That's completely glossed over with by a, a towering personality that has been pumped up, blown up to be more powerful, that he's got the government by the balls and Boris Johnson won't even come on his show and everybody thinks he should run the country and he's Mr. Wise Guy. So I feel slightly nauseous. (laughs) Sorry. Has someone got a bucket? Hang on. (laughs) (laughs) So very entertaining, Mr. Morgan. And we are entertained, but don't worry about it. Us embittered journalists, ex-mainstream media, alternative journalists who work for free will give people the real news. You just sit back and relax and enjoy your millions and go on for holiday in Antigua. Meanwhile, everybody else is locked down. Meanwhile, I've got a lot more serious issues to deal with. In particular, the Jimmy Savile cover-up and the case of Claire McAlpine, who committed suicide based on abuse that she'd apparently allegedly experienced during the time of Top of the Pops in 1971. This, along with many other cases, were covered up. So you have a British organisation, which is also an institution, putting women in jail for not paying the TV licence. And the story of Claire McAlpine's suicide after she was abused at the hands of Jimmy Savile is covered up. And my friend, who was a legend, a film actor, comedy actor, he was cancelled by the British establishment in the 90s. And he was a strong personality, so the, um, the hit job on his career didn't actually manifest in the newspapers until after he died. And it is thanks to YouTube and the internet that we can get extra details that shine a light, open a door, Let's you see through a crack. In the next clip, Sonia Poulton, if it's the first time you've ever seen her, has done some excellent work on the Madeleine McCann case. Highly likely. But there's also other stuff that's really, really peculiar. I have this image and it's really odd. There was a the, a Channel 4 documentary done about them. It was all very, very soft um, in the early days. And they have actually, they've, for a split second, but because I'm a journalist, I, I capture things like that. For a split second, it's, it, it shows a part of their house and it actually looks like there is a, a, a an ashes urn on one of their mantelpieces. And it definitely is about Madeline and there's all stuff. It's all surrounded by Madeline. But there's this box in front of it. I would like to know what's in that box. Why is it with all these TV programs on forensic police work, and all the advances in science, why is it that there are so many crimes still unsolved? If she is right, is this leading towards a much larger human trafficking group, gang or mafia? Uh, and in the last few moments, four people smugglers have been jailed for their roles in the deaths of 39 migrants in a lorry container in Essex. Let's take you straight over to the Old Bailey. We can speak to our crime correspondent, Martin Brunt. Bring us up to date, Martin. Yes, in the last few minutes, the judge has handed out uh, long sentences, and I should say that's not 
uh, unexpected. Um, the judge has told uh, the seven men in the dock that this was a smuggling operation that was sophisticated, long-running and profitable and had interfered with the UK's attempts to control uh, immigration. So that's 39 dead bodies and that's crimes that go all of the way right up to the top level of society from the bottom level to the top level only the lorry drivers got caught but the real people behind that are possibly still free we still don't know what happened to Madeleine McCann we were told that Princess Diana died in a car crash we were told that the driver of the car was drunk but there's no witness or evidence to any of that. Mr. Rees said his last true memory was driving off from the back of the hotel in the Rue Cambon when these final pictures were taken. He claimed to have had two flashbacks, although he said he couldn't be sure how reliable they were. The first is of sitting at traffic lights in the Place de la Concorde with paparazzi on motorbikes next to the Mercedes. His second flashback comes after the car has descended into the Alma Tunnel and crashed into the 13th pillar. Mr. Reese was seriously injured in the wreckage of the car. His head had gone through the windscreen, breaking every bone in his face. I do not remember the pain, he said, but in my head there was a lot of confusion. I remember hearing someone moaning and the name Dodie was uttered, but I do not know if this was... But I do not know if this was... I conclude that this was Princess Diana, as it was a female voice.